uh, gauging point on on Errol Spence and and his skills and you know I expect him once again to try to come out in terrific fashion um, and try to make a big statement and showcase his skills and his talent to the world. Styles makes fights, you know. He's a he's a tremendous athlete. I expect great things from all the whole world of boxing expects great things from him. Before um, I, I at one point I was prospect of the year. Errol Spence was prospect of the year. Um, I see him as somebody who's a few steps behind. You know, I expect him to catch up very soon, and I look forward to the challenge when the challenge presents itself. You know, um, obviously everybody knows it was Floyd Mayweather who chatted in his ear to originally, you know, say my name out of uh, his mouth. I believe. I mean, I wasn't even there to there to watch his fight. I was there to watch the other fight, so I missed his fight. And someone said that, oh, he, he just called you out. He just called you out, Keith. But he he actually said Floyd's name first or something like that. You know, so it just you know someone was telling him what to do, what to say. Um, but obviously, if you're not going after who's number one. What did I do when I first hit HBO? I called out Pauly, I called out Mayweather. Yeah. You know what I mean? I called out everybody. You better you know? not duck me, son. You better not duck me, son. <laughs> you know? So, you know, since then, I've calmed down. One thing that helped calm me down is being the champion of the world. I am the champion of the world. I have the belt. You know what I'm saying? So there are other belts out there and I'm you know, I try to be adamant saying that I do want to collect more than one. I do want to make those uh, fights happen. But um like I said, man, about um EJ man, you know, I look forward to his rise and him coming up and the challenge when it does truly present itself. And Keith, about the, the sparring, I know that you kind of put it out there a little bit. You showed it to people. I know it was on the All Access Online. What made you want to put it out and show it to people? There was a lot of talk about it. Y'all motherfuckers kept talking about it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Asking such a simple old question, man. Oh, uh, we heard this. And Kenny said that. And da da da. And then, you know, we had uh, we had their boys from Vegas down in our gym. And then he was like, yo, I get to see the tape. I get to see the tape. I said, yeah, you get to see the tape. So I brought the tape to the gym. He came to the gym. He said, I have to see the tape. He says, you mind if I film it? I said, no, I don't mind you filming. Then he goes, you know, you mind if I post it up? I said, post it up, man. I mean, we about to throw down. Give the fans a preview. Everybody knows that there was a sparring session. Everybody heard this. Everybody heard that. There's a preview. Even with that, both fighters can say, no matter how you feel about that, that was over three years ago. This fight's going to be a different fight. Yada, yada, yada. It is. The fight is going to be a fight. Sparring is sparring. Fighting is fighting. Sparring is not judged. In the fight, it will be judged. That sparring session, I was... My hands were carrying 20 ounce gloves. I saw that. <laughs> I'm going to be carrying eight ounce gloves. You know what I mean? Mm. So the the real stakes are on the line Saturday night. Both careers are on the line. My title is on the line. My undefeated record is on the line. You know, it's a, it's a great fight. It's a great match. <laughs> there are a lot of fighters who are considered top of the king, but for some reason they don't mention your name very often. And you're right up there. You haven't lost, you're winning. You consider yourself a pound right now, or right up there? Um, you know, yeah, please. I do believe that I deserve to be on the pound for pound list. Um, there are, there have been setbacks in my career. You know, I have been fighting twice a year for, you know, the past three years. Um, but with, with my record, I do believe that I deserve to be pound for pound. And I believe with a KO victory um, Saturday night, that would easily solidify a position if I don't already carry a position in the pound for pound rankings. Do I believe I'm number one pound for pound? I say no. Um, I do believe that I will have many opportunities to strive for that in my career. Um, and, um, and, I, and I look forward to that opportunity. We spoke Keith. to Sam Watson, and he said you had such humble beginnings. They used to come with a moped to the gym. What kept you going? And I said, forget this. I'm going to get a job and make some money. Because I'm sure it wasn't easy. Um, luckily, um, I've always had support, right? I was stipling $1,000 a month um, from Al Heyman. And with that $12,000 for the year, you know, I was um, able to live, man. You know, I was um, living in my mother's house. And I, I made a decision at the age of uh, um, 18 years old 
you know, I grew up thinking when a little mad, pretty rebellious, thinking I was going to move out right away. But I said, okay, you move out, you're most likely going to have to pay 500 a month somewhere, this, that. You know, you might have to get a roommate to save some money. You know, your roommate might suck, you know. <laughs> like, they might lose their job and not pay their bills, you know. Um, you know, you don't like doing dishes. I just wonder if they're going to like doing dishes, you know. I just I just knew the, the chaos of reality, right? And um, I, the reality re-humbled me. And I was able to calm down. I was being a little bit more realistic and I said I'd rather give my own mother 400 a month to live to be in the bedroom that I've already been in before I'll be right here I give my mother because I knew that the mortgage was about 800 a month so I didn't pay electric I didn't um, um, I think I did pay my own internet bill but I didn't pay an electric bill I didn't pay a water bill I simply gave my mother 400 a month and then I paid for my cell phone my internet and um, and for gas in the moped, bro. <laughs> Turning it around, Keith, uh, from all your excitement, how do you assess Tommy Hearn and Sugar Ray Leonard saying this fight reminds us of our war? That, that we both <laughs> undefeated battlers and we are the top. Nobody was top uh, higher than the other, but this was an even fight. How do you assess that, them, them making that uh, connection? You know, it's... um. It's beautiful. I, I didn't know that that was done. So um, you know, that's uh, that's that's uh, that's great, man. Because like I said, man, I remember being a kid, and um, for Christmas, um, I got a book, mm -hmm. and it was a boxing book, and they had black and white pictures, and had all the old fighters in it. And I remember, like, you know, I want I want to be in a book like this one day. I want another. And I was I was like probably maybe nine, ten years old. And I literally said, I want one day for a kid my age to find a book like this, flip through it, and for my picture to be in that book. And I was ten years old. So, you know, for for them to say that this fight is practically equal to their fight is it's an honor and blessing because I'm here as an entertainer. I'm here for the love of of the sport, you know, and and the money doesn't come without a fan base, and and the fans love to see these kind of fights happen, and it's obvious in the Walter Wade division that Keith Thurman and Sean Porter are two of the most exciting and devastating Walter Waits that America has to offer today. So this is a terrific fight. How does Eric Fires uh, Hawk time relate to your uh, uh, That's actually funny because he is secretly my favorite fighter of all time you know see like because i said i really don't have a favorite fighter of all time you know what I mean? like i don't really have a favorite fighter of all times but i kind of fell in love with hulk time you know what I, mean? I mean i really loved aaron the hulk prior and everything that i got to learn about him when i did and i the things that i've seen on like you know uh you know the fight with the bottle of water the one i mixed the one i mixed you know in the rematch and everything but um you know how he grew up and um I, what i watched his amateur bout against him and the hitman mm -hmm. or, um, you know and they competed in and the hawk won the fight you know um the the controversy that nobody wanted to fight the hawk you know that um sugar ray leonard didn't want to fight him you know um there there were you know, he was just devastated. You know, they say he was a little cuckoo, but you know, <laughs> he, was, he was devastated. You know, um, he, he was an athlete. He was a tremendous athlete at that. He had punch and power. Um, he had a very awkward style, agile, you know, and, um, you know, I really, I really, really, really do admire Aaron. Do you still get nervous uh, going into fights? Because I know when you were like 15, you were sparring against uh, pro fighters. Mm -hmm. You probably were nervous back then. Are you still getting nervous? How did you deal with your, your nerves since you started so early sparring, like I said, big name fighters? It's funny that you mention that. So the first fight that I was not nervous in, in my whole um, boxing career, I was obviously an amateur at the time, right? And the first fight, I had no nerves. I lost the match. I said to myself, you're never allowed to not be nervous ever again. You have to be nervous. You, you can always lose. There's always a possibility that this man is better than you. Because, you know, it's not over till it's over. 
you don't know the truth until the truth reveals itself. So, you know, the thing is to not let the nerves get to you, you know. But I enjoy them. I enjoy the internal battle of, you know, of, of doubt trying to set its way into my heart and then my, you know, my will and everything throwing doubt back out, you know? So it's, it's, there's like a play of emotions that happen before the battle. And um, it's interesting because on, on the religious side, in the Bhavatan Gita, Krishna goes to Arjuna right before a, a battle. This is war that is gonna happen between practically two nations. So it's a huge war. But it's not just, it's not just some, it's not like he's about to go to war against somebody he hates. He's going against war on his former mentors. These are people he looked up to and admired. And he told Lord Krishna how my, his heart was very wavering right the day of the battle. Dude, the army behind him, the, the army in front of him. You know what I'm saying? And it was very wavering. He said, how am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to get through this battle? You know, and pretty much Lord Krishna stated to him, you know, those, they might have been that way once upon a time, but they've changed their way of thinking. We've already tried to negotiate with them and they don't want to negotiate with you no longer. And just like the Bible says, there's a time for everything and there is a time for war. I'm, I'm somebody who cross-references between religions, you know what I'm saying? So that's one thing that, that I could see from the Bible and this and what Lord Krishna stated that, you know, we tried. Krishna went and pleaded and tried to already negotiate terms and stuff and they said no and they said well, you know so obviously the outcome is war it was time for war another thing is you know with the hindus and their belief of reincarnation and stuff lord krishna said why are you thinking in such this way when you know that you know the truth of the flesh and that we are spirit and that you cannot cut them with a sword you cannot burn them with a flame you know so it was Krishna who had to have a speech with Arjuna and help him get that doubt that was wavering and entering into his heart and throw it back out for him to be victorious in that battle, you know, and I find, you know, I sometimes I bring the doubt upon myself where you should worry about losing. You should worry about being knocked out. This ain't basketball. This ain't football. You know what I'm saying? And even even with them boys, they, you have you have accidents. You know what I'm saying? So you you should worry, but you should acknowledge how many miles you ran, how many sit-ups you did, how many push-ups you've done, what it sounds like when I hit the heavy bag. Did y'all see me knock down the heavy bag? You see what I'm saying? You know. So. So right guys, we're it's, wrap it's by acknowledging okay. the hard work and dedication that you've done up until this point, up until this day. Every ounce of sweat that has come out of my body. And then you know that you are prepared. Yeah.